Hey folks, Jordan with the Young Turks, TYT Politics, happy Friday. Uh, it's been a busy week and uh, obviously the news has been busy uh, yesterday and today. Uh, I think that a lot of the establishment is trying to write off the bombshell revelations that came out regarding Donna Brazil, uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC basically being one in the same uh, throughout the primary. They're trying to write it off as Bernie bros. They're trying to write it off as, uh, you know, sore losers. They're trying to write it off as those conspiracy theorists. And they're trying to write it off as, uh, oh, Donna Brazil and her alleged, her allegations against the DNC. Now, it's tough for me because I'm now in a weird position to have to, in a way, defend Donna Brazil because she's telling the truth. So even though Donna Brazil originally, obviously, uh, her and I had a pretty, I'd say, explosive exchange uh, a year ago at the third presidential debate. Obviously, uh, I was able to be the first one to find those emails in WikiLeaks that uh, showed she was passing off questions. Uh, I did give her credit yesterday uh, for coming out, admitting that the Clinton campaign was basically controlling the Democratic National Committee's finances staffing, um, strategy, everything, for over, over a year before uh, Hillary Clinton was even the nominee. So you have had, essentially, uh, MSNBC, CNN, uh, framing it as, oh, Donna Brazil is alleging. Well, no, she's not alleging. She was the interim chairwoman. She was the interim chairwoman. So she had access to the joint agreement between Hillary Clinton's campaign and the DNC called the Hillary Victory Fund or the F joint agreement. So she saw that essentially the DNC had agreed to allow Hillary Clinton to essentially control their staffing, to control their finances, and to control their strategy. Uh, I would think that strategy included planting negative stories with the media about Bernie Sanders, about strategy, when we should put debates on television, how many debates we should have, those kinds of things. So we'll get back to the media in a minute, but I want to tell you what Nick Merrill said. Nick Merrill was uh, the uh, traveling press secretary for Hillary Clinton's campaign, so traveled with the campaign. And Nick Merrill uh, said, he tweeted, in case you missed it, Crux of all of this bluster about the DNC and Hillary for America, meaning Hillary Clinton's campaign, is Sanders didn't have the same opportunities to work with the DNC. Simply not true. They opted not to. So what Nick Merrill, again, press secretary for Hillary Clinton's campaign, is saying is Hillary Clinton's campaign didn't have an unfair advantage over Bernie's campaign. Bernie's campaign just decided not to uh, engage in that um, joint fundraising agreement with the DNC. He is partly correct and partly lying. So let me tell you why he's partly correct. Yes, Bernie Sanders' campaign did have the opportunity to sign that document and have a joint fundraising agreement, which money Bernie fundraises, uh, would have some of it would have went to the DNC, and Bernie's campaign would have had access uh, and say on some matters of the DNC. Bernie Sanders' campaign from the beginning told the DNC, we don't want to be part of that fundraising, uh, that fundraising joint agreement because we want to raise money through small dollar donations. We don't want big corporate money. We don't want super PAC money. So we will raise money our way. And Bernie Sanders, by the way, later on did go around the country and fundraise for uh, ca some candidates that the DNC was endorsing. So it's not like Bernie never, in, never um, raised money for Democrats. So Nick Merrill, who said the only thing that this is about is that Bernie's campaign did not take advantage of the, sa the, th the thing Hillary Clinton's campaign took advantage of, but they could have if they wanted. That's what he's saying. So he points out a story. Uh, I don't know when the story's from, but he put it in his tweet. He says, in a September 2015 email obtained by the Washington Post, a lawyer for Perkins Coie, a law firm representing both the DNC and the Clinton campaign, wrote the Sanders campaign with a copy of what was presented as a, quote, standard joint fundraising agreement. Quote, this is the same one we have used with other campaigns, wrote attorney Graham Wilson. Okay. Uh, 
At the end of the same email, Wilson suggested that should the Sanders campaign raise, quote, significantly more money than was required to pay for the party voter file, then Sanders could have a say in how those funds would be used to, quote, prepare for the general election. The DNC, quote, quote, the DNC has had discussions like this with the Clinton campaign and is, of course, willing to do so with all committees raising funds for the committee, Wilson wrote. So what Merrill is basically saying is if Sanders would have chose to raise an ungodly amount of corporate uh, oligarchic money for the DNC, then Sanders could have a say in how those funds would be used to prepare for the general election. So there's several things wrong with that. And he's lying, of course. First of all, you have to pay a certain amount for the voter files. I think that's nonsense anyway, but okay, let's, let's allow that. You have to pay a certain amount for the voter files. One second, sorry. Just responding to someone here who's la-da-dee, la-da-da. One second. Too many people messaging me at one time. It's very, very frustrating. So you have to pay for the voter files, he's saying. But he's also saying if Bernie Sanders' campaign would have ended up raising uh, more money than Hillary Clinton's campaign, they would have had say in strategy and things like that with the DNC. Well, no, no, no. That's not how it works. That is not how it works. Now, also... You're telling me that if Bernie Sanders' campaign, sorry, one second. You're telling me that if Bernie Sanders' campaign, I am live now. If Bernie Sanders' campaign would have um, raised an ungodly sum of money, according to Nick Merrill, uh, if the Sanders' campaign raises significantly more money than was required to pay for the party voter file, then Sanders could have a say in how those funds would be used to prepare for the general election. Yeah. So if Bernie Sanders would have raised more money than Hillary Clinton, then he would have had a say in the DNC's finances, the DNC's staffing, and the DNC's strategy. If anybody believes that, I have a bridge to sell you. That is nonsense. So this joint agreement signed in 2015 to say, well, Bernie could have signed the agreement too, but he chose not to. It's bullshit. Complete bullshit. Hold on. Let me know if you could hear me, see me hearing some things about uh, the hotspot. It's complete nonsense. You can't, you cannot say, oh, if one candidate pays us off more, meaning funds us more, we're going to give that candidate a say in, to quote, prepare for the general election. Uh, I think giving Hillary Clinton's campaign complete control of your finances, of your staffing, of your strategy is a little bit more than, quote, to pair, uh, say in preparing for the general election. Don't you think? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So at the end of the day, they are lying to you. They, they are lying to you. They are telling you Bernie Sanders had the same opportunity to, had the same opportunity that Hillary, Hillary Clinton's campaign had. If he would have just, quote, if he would have, quote, um, if the Sanders campaign raised significantly more money than was required for the voter file, they would have had just as much of a say on, the, on matters related to the DNC uh, to, quote, prepare for the election. Well, last time I checked, Bernie Sanders in August of 2015, he was a brand new candidate and had wasn't raising uh, all that money. So you sign on the dotted line in August 2015 with Hillary Clinton's campaign more than, more than uh, a year. She just became nominee in uh, July 2016. So almost a year before you sign paperwork and sign on the dotted line with Hillary Clinton's campaign, basically giving her complete control of the Democratic National Committee's finances, staffing, strategy. And you mean to tell me if Bernie Sanders would have basically raised more money than, uh, that, and paid the DNC more money? Oh, we would have given you a say in strategy and staffing and um, finances. That's nonsense. And by the way, that's not how a neutral party works. Basically, what they are saying here is, well... 
we would have we would have uh, bended our finances, allowed staffing decisions, and allowed control over strategy to the highest bidder. So if Hillary Clinton's uh, campaign funded us more, we'd give it to her. Or if Bernie Sanders' campaign agreed to fund us or uh, donate us, we would have given him uh, control. That's not how a neutral political uh, party like the DNC works. Complete nonsense. And also, when you say uh, Bernie had access to the same things Hillary Clinton did, uh, last time I checked, Bernie Sanders' campaign couldn't make decisions on the Democratic National Committee's staffing. Bernie Sanders' campaign couldn't make decisions about the Democratic National Committee's finances. As Donna Brazil wrote in her piece, I always wondered why I had to get approval before sending a press release from Hillary Clinton's campaign. Do you think Donna Brazil had to get approval from <laughs> Bernie Sanders' campaign to write a press release? I think not. So basically, the Clinton campaign, through Nick Merrill, is essentially trying to muddy the waters. They're essentially trying to fudge the facts and basically make it seem that, oh, Bernie Sanders, the DNC reached out to Bernie Sanders' campaign. They could have also uh, signed on to this joint fundraising agreement. All they had to do was raise more money than uh, raise more money from the D for the DNC than it costs to p get access to the voter files. Well, really what they're saying is all Bernie had to do was take oodles and oodles of money from big banks, pharmaceutical companies, big oil, Silicon Valley, give the Democratic National Committee a hefty percentage of it, and then we wouldn't have tilted it towards Hillary. I don't understand. Like Nick Merrill, Hillary Clinton's press secretary, doesn't realize that he's actually making it worse. He is basically admitting that Bernie Sanders had the same, had the same chance to buy off the DNC to do its bidding. All he had to do was funnel in money. All he had to do was take money from the usual suspects in Wall Street and big oil and then give the DNC a percentage of it. We would have let him ha make some decisions on our staffing. We would have let him have a say on when the debates are. We, we would have even done some op hit jobs for him and planted negative stories in the media about Hillary Clinton. Please, please. Bernie Sanders could have raised $10 billion, $10 trillion for the DNC. They were never going to allow Bernie Sanders' campaign, a Democratic Socialist. Remember, Debbie Wasserman Schultz was a Democratic National Committee chairwoman at the time. Uh, she was Hillary Clinton in 2008's co-chair of her party, of her campaign. You think Debbie Wasserman Schultz, even if Bernie had signed that agreement, even if Bernie had brought in mu tons of money, oodles, a bank load of cash, for the DNC. You think Debbie Wasserman Schultz with a bankrupted DNC, as Brazil admitted, you think Debbie Wasserman Schultz was going to have let Bernie Sanders' campaign have a say in anything? And why this is so important and why I'm doing a video today, why I will report on it next week, because the media is saying, oh, stop dividing us. Oh, we need to be united. Oh, the Virginia governor's race is next week. And oh, you got you angry Bernie bros and sisters. You're going to cause him to lose now with all your crying. Why this is important is not, a, it is gaslight, gaslighting. Why this is important is not only because we need to get accountability for what happened in 2016. We need to get accountability and make sure it doesn't happen ever again in 2018 and during the nominating process in 2020. I'm not interested in having m more neoliberal fake progressives rammed down our throat because the process is rigged. Now, were the machines rigged? There's no proof of that. Were, uh, you know, was there widespread election fraud in every single state? There were in some states, but not every state. But when a political candidate's campaign is in cahoots and is in communication constantly and strategizing and handing over the keys in terms of their finances and their who they hire and their strategy well before that candidate is the Democratic nominee. Again, no problem with it if it was after she fairly became the Democratic nominee, but it was a year before. When that is allowed to happen, you don't have fair elections. I don't care if it hurts Bernie Sanders. I don't care if it would have hurt a Republican. It's not right in any party, whether it's hurting a progressive, a conservative, or a marshmallow. So how do we know, does MSNBC or CNN or the New York Times care at all if it's going to be this way in 2018? Of course not. 
Do they care at all if it's going to be this way in 2020? Of course not, because they're not interested in democracy. They're not interested in progressive change. They're not interested in making sure that those millions of people who volunteer or those millions of people who donate money are doing so in the background of a fair election. They're not interested in that. All they're interested in, what will bring them ratings and what will make their parent oligarchic, their oligarchy and parent companies happy. And when people write the comments, it was not illegal. Isn't that kind of even more concerning that it's legal for a political campaign to assent what Hillary Clinton's campaign did, honestly. And what this joint fundraising agreement allows is for people to go around the max donation directly to campaigns. So if I wanted to max out my donation to Hillary Clinton, then I could then send separate max donations to state Democratic parties as well as the DNC, and they all funnel back to Hillary Clinton's campaign. So even though I maxed out to Hillary Clinton's campaign, the money I sent to state parties of the DNC were... Almost all of it was ending up going back to Hillary Clinton's campaign. That is money laundering, but it's been legalized. So when you say, oh, it's legal, that doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it right. And when you have Chuck Todd going on MSNBC and saying, uh, and the biggest part of the story to him is, oh, Donna Brazil just threw a grenade on the Democratic Party. Donna Brazil just threw a grenade. It might actually cause the Virginia uh, governor candidate, Ralph North. Nord Nordum? I don't even know his name. To lose because Donna Brazil and you have Huffington Post article headlines, Donna Brazil the sellout. Again, I'm not totally defending Donna Brazil because obviously I think she has done wrong. I gave her credit for this yesterday. I don't know what her motives were, but credit for telling the truth. But no, 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 no. The people that threw a grenade, Chuck Todd, who is one of the most establishment figures in the media, maybe the most establishment figure in the media. The people who threw the grenade was Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The people who threw the grenade was Hillary Clinton. The people who threw the grenade was John Podesta. The people who threw the grenade was CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, who all knew this. They all knew about this, but chose not to cover it because they are more responsible, not in covering news, but covering for the establishment. They are more interested in not covering news, not covering corruption, not covering injustice, but covering for the establishment. So when Hillary Clinton's press secretary says, oh, all this bluster about a, a joint agreement that we signed, but Bernie's people could have signed. No, Bernie's people, even if they signed it, even if they took in oodles of Wall Street and big oil cash and pharmaceutical cash, they would have never, ever had an ounce of control over the DNC. And by the way, that's not how a neutral party process works. That's not how a neutral nomination process works. It's not which candidate pays the DNC more money, which candidate raises more money for the DNC and thus gets the control of a DNC, which means when the DNC schedules debates, the DNC planting negative stories about Bernie Sanders. You think it's a coincidence that Don, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz was constantly going on TV criticizing Bernie Sanders? You think it's a coincidence Debbie Wasserman Schultz was going on TV hollering about fake chairs being thrown at the Nevada convention? No, she was doing it because Hillary Clinton, besides being her uh, BFF, Hillary Clinton, they had agreed to give Hillary Clinton control of the DNC. It's totally rigged. I hate to agree with Trump, but he's right. He's talking about this to try and ignore the investigation into him and his campaign, but he's right on the facts. So I'm not going to stop talking about it. I'm not going to stop reporting. I'm not going to start stop updating it. I don't really, to me, the point is not, how is this going to affect the Virginia governor's races? And oh my God, Donna Brazil, how dare you tell the truth and further divide the Democratic Party? How about we start talking about who's really dividing the Democratic Party? Uh, the establishment, because they're more interested in protecting their money, protecting their power, and protecting their cocktail crowd friends than Medicare for All, free public college, ending private prisons, and ending Citizens United. And I don't care if continually talking about this offends them. I don't care. It's not our job to unite. It's our job to demand free and fair elections. If Bernie Sanders or a progressive loses, but it's fair, and the DNC isn't putting their goddamn foot on the scale, 
throwing their throwing their whole body on the scale. That's one thing. But when you have a DNC that totally corrupted the process, that is not only about how do we get accountability for last year. We need to make sure there is accountability, safeguards, and mechanisms in place so that it's fair for 2018. It's fair for 2020. Because as Jenk interviewed some Justice Democrat candidates yesterday, I'm going to interview some other candidates. There are people fighting very hard around this country, progressive people, to win election. They are primarying people like Dianne Feinstein, like Joe Manchin, um, like Debbie Wasserman Schultz, a lot of establishment figures. They are working 24-7. They are... Uh, d- begging for money from people like you and me, small dollar donors, they deserve a fair process. Not just progressives, but Republicans too. It doesn't matter if you're progressive. It doesn't matter if you're conservative. The DNC nor the RNC should be tilting the scales. And by the way, by the way, to close, can you imagine, can you imagine if it came out that Donald Trump's campaign a year before he became the nominee had, a, had an agreement with the RNC that Donald Trump's campaign would control the RNC's finances, would control the RNC's staffing, and would control the RNC's strategy a year before he became the nominee. My God, they'd be calling for impeachment. MSNBC, CNN, the New York Times would be all over it 24-7. They'd be calling for impeachment. Here, you get a segment or two and that's it. It's outrageous. It is completely outrageous. Check out Nomiki's interview. Nomiki interviewed Tulsi Gabbard, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Emma did a video describing the actual nuts and bolts of the money laundering. Uh, I did videos on this yesterday. We will continue to do videos on this as more news develops. Uh, I will also check my Twitter, at Jordan Chariton. Uh, I have been tweeting up a storm on this. Also, little shameless plug, this weekend, if you need something to do, download chapter three of my book, Corporate Con Job. You can become a Patreon at patreon.com slash corporate con job. That, excuse me, patreon.com slash Jordan Chariton. That's patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash Jordan Chariton. Chapter one of the book is all about the behind the scenes. I bring you on the campaign trail. Just how did the media destroy Bernie Sanders' campaign? I call out names. I show you secret emails, including one sent from CNN's Jake Tapa to me. Uh, asking me to speak off the record. Uh, And chapter three is all about how the Democratic establishment and the media basically propped up Hillary Clinton uh, and squashed Bernie Sanders uh, with a specific focus on how they didn't really lay a glove on Hillary Clinton. Don't give me the thing about the emails. They They didn't touch her on the foundation. They didn't touch her on her donations from Wall Street. They barely laid a glove on her. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to youtube.com slash TYT politics right now. Bye-bye.